When I was growing up in Concord, Massachusetts in the 1950s, uh, I lived on a river and uh, had a canoe and uh, always had pet raccoons. And after school, I used to go out and uh, paddle around, catch turtles, and uh, uh, would often find arrowheads eroding out of um, the riverbank. And at that time, the town library in Concord had a special room that was set aside. It was just full of uh, rows and rows and rows of arrowheads and Indian artifacts. And Concord had always been a kind of special place for people for thousands of years. And in fact, I found myself walking in the footsteps of um, Henry David Thoreau, who was also uh, an interesting antiquarian. And so I, you think about my beginnings as an anthropologist, and they really go back to this kind of antiquarian mindset of someone that was communed with nature and uh, interested in all aspects of the natural world and of history. And growing up in Concord, it was such a uh, history was so palatable, and, and uh, everywhere you went, you sort of felt you were walking in the footsteps of people from before. So, When I was in college uh, in the late 60s, I majored in anthropology. I, I, was, um, uh, I was very fortunate at the school I went to uh, afforded opportunities to get field experiences while I was still at school. And, and so uh, I came out of my university training with archaeological experiences in Arkansas and Guatemala and parts of New England. At the time, I had become very interested in the northern landscape. A friend and I spent our summer and falls canoeing to these northern places, to Hudson's Bay and to Ungava Bay. And in those experiences, we met uh, Cree Indian and Canadian Inuit families, people that still lived on the land. And to me that was a really kind of an extraordinary eye-opening experience that there were, were still uh, Native Americans, that, that uh, First Nations peoples in Canada that had that close rapport to the land, that were subsistence hunters. And, and so I began to look at the possibilities of finding employment in the North, which led me back to archaeology. I think the best educational experience I had was after, after encountering um, Inuit communities in Labrador, um, I, I wondered how, as a southern archaeologist, we could ever hope to make sense of life in the north without experiencing something of it. You know, you, 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 can't, you can read all about the storms and the struggles to find food and survive in books, but it, 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 it's quite divorced from the actual experience of life in the North. So I would argue that the best um, educational experience I had was a winter I spent in 1979 living with uh, an Inuit family in, in northern Labrador and uh, in a small cabin uh, 30 miles from town and you know, we, we went sealing on the, at the ice edge and we went caribou hunting up in the barrens and you know, if we didn't find food, we were hungry, and we had to make our own fires and uh, travel using traditional knowledge and methods. And it was a sobering and profound experience to just realize the depth of knowledge that northern hunters had. At the time, I thought, well, that would be very nice to do, is just live in a cabin and be up north all the time. But uh, I had been fortunate enough to um, meet uh, Dr. Bill Fitzhugh here at the Smithsonian um, and uh, he both offered me employment in the summer on his archaeological field crews uh, and also encouraged me to go to graduate school and that, that uh, um, in order to make a career in archaeology and anthropology you really needed the graduate uh, degree and so that led me to University of Massachusetts.